Good day, grade 10s. In this lesson, we're going to continue with our looking at our number patterns, and we're going to do examples to make sure that we can find the nth term. So again, what we're going to be doing is similar to what we did in the last example. On the last PowerPoint, we're going to be seeing how the pattern can help us find a random term in the series. So let's look at the first one. We are asked, what is the value of the hundredth? term in this sequence. And the first term is 15, then 9, then 3, then negative 3. So let's write it like this in a table. So if we have the term, just so we have things straight, and then we have the value. And then we have the value of the term. I'll do a nice little table here. So our first term we saw is 15. Our second term is 9. Our third term is 3. I'm just really copying this down, but I'm making sure we associate it with the right term. And then our fourth term, our fourth term is negative 3. And they want, to ask, they want us to figure out what the hundredth term of this sequence is going to be. So let's see what's happening here, if we can uh, discern some type of pattern. So we went from the first term to the second term. What happened? 15 to 9, it looks like we went down by 6. It's always good to think about just how much the number's changed by. That's always the simplest type of pattern. So we went down by 6. We subtracted 6. Then to go from 9 to 3, well, we subtracted 6 again. We subtracted 6 again. And then to go from 3 to negative 3, well, we, we subtracted 6 again. We subtracted 6 again. So it looks like every every term you subtract 6. So the second term is going to be 6 less than the first term. The third term is going to be 12 minus, from the first term, or negative 6 subtracted twice. So in the third term, you subtract negative 6 twice. In the fourth term, you subtract negative 6 three times. So whatever term you're looking at, you subtract negative 6 one less than that many times. So let me write this down just so notice. When you, your first term, you have 15, and you don't subtract negative 6 at all. Or you could say you subtract negative 6 zero times. So you could say this is 15 minus negative 6 times, or let me write it better this way, minus 0 times negative 6. That's what that first term is right there. What's the second term? This is 15. It's just we just subtracted negative 6 once. Or you could say minus 1 times 6. Or you could say plus 1 times negative 6. Either way, we're subtracting the 6 once. Now what's happening here? This is 15. This is 15 minus 2 times negative 6. Or sorry, minus 2 times 6. Minus 2 times 6. We're subtracting a 6 twice. What's the fourth term? This is 15 minus, we're subtracting the, three, the 6 3 times from the 15. So minus 3 times 6. So if you see the pattern here, when, our term, when we have our fourth term, we have the term minus 1 right there. The fourth term, we have a 3. The third term, we have a 2. The second term, we have a 1. So if we had the nth term, if we just had the nth term here, what's this going to be? It's going to be 15 minus, you see, it's going to be n minus 1 right here, right? When n is 4, n minus 1 is 3. When n is 3, n minus 1 is 2. When n is 2, n minus 1 is 1. When n is 1, n minus 1 is 0. So we're going to have this term right here is n minus 1. So minus n minus 1 times 6. So if you want to figure out the hundredth term of this sequence, I didn't even have to write it in this general term. You could just look at this pattern. It's going to be, and I'll do it in pink, the hundredth term in our sequence, I'll continue our table down, is going to be what? It's going to be 15 minus 100 minus 1, which is 99, times 6. Right? I just followed the pattern. 1, you had a 0 here. 2, you had a 1 here. 3, you had a 2 here. 100, you're going to have a 99 here. So let's just calculate what this is. What's 99 times 6? So 99 times 6. Actually, you could do this in your head. You could say, that's going to be 6 less than 100 times 6, which is 600, and 6 less is 594. But if you don't want to do it that way, you just do it the old-fashioned way. 6 times 9 is 54. 
carry the 5. 9 times 6, or 6 times 9, is 54. 54 plus 5 is 594. So this right here is 594. And then to figure out what 15, so we want to figure out, we want to figure out what 15 minus 500 in 94 is. And this can sometimes be confusing, but the way I always process this in my head is I say that this is the exact same thing as the negative of 594 minus 15. And if you don't believe me, distribute out this negative sign. Negative 1 times 594 is negative 594. Negative 1 times negative 15 is positive 15. So these two statements are equivalent. This is much easier for my brain to understand. So what's 594 minus 15? You should do it. We could do this in our head. 594 minus 14 would be 580. And then 580 minus one more would be 579. So that right there is 579. And then we have this negative sign sitting out there. So our, the hundredth term in our sequence will be negative 579. Right, so you can see that it was actually quite easy to work out the hundredth term if you took it step by step. The trick is to always find the first three or four terms, look for the pattern, and then apply that pattern. Now let's look at another example. Our question asks us, what equation describes the growth pattern of this sequence of blocks? So we want to figure out, if I know that x is equal to 10, how many blocks am I going to have? So let's just look at this pattern here. So our first term in our sequence, or our first object, or our first pattern of blocks right here, we just have one block right there. So let me write the term right up here. So I have the term. Not term, and then I'll have the number of blocks. Number of blocks. Number of blocks. So in our first term, we had one block. And then our second term, I'll just write this down just so we have it. What happened here? So it looks just like our first term, but we added a column here of four blocks. So it's like one plus four right there. So we're going to have five blocks right there. We added 4 to it. Then in our third term, what happened? What happened in our third term? Well, it just looks just like the second term, but we added another column of four blocks here. right? We added this column right there, if you imagine they're being added to the left-hand side of the pattern. So we added four more blocks. We have nine blocks now. We have nine blocks. So it looks like each time we're adding four blocks. And on this fourth term, same thing. It, the third term is just this right here. This right here is what the third term looked like. And then we added another column of four blocks right here. So we added four more. So we're going to have 13 blocks. So our fourth term is 13. So let's see if we can come up with a formula, either looking at the, the graphics or maybe looking at the numbers themselves. So one way to think about it, so we start off with, so when x is equal to 1, let's say that x is equal to the term, we add just this 1 there. Then when x is equal to 2, we added one column of 4. So this is when x is equal to 2. We have one column of 4. Then when x is equal to 3, we have two columns of 4 right there. And you could even say when x is equal to 1, you had zero columns, right? We had no nothing, no extra this columns of 4 blocks. We didn't have any. And then when x is equal to 4, we had three columns. We had three columns there when x is equal to 4. So what's a pattern here? Or what, how can we express the number of blocks we're going to have given the term that we have? Well, it looks like we're always going to have one block. So let me write it this way. If I write the number of blocks, let me write it this way. Number, number of, the block, of blocks. It looks like we're always going to have one, right? We have this one right here, that one right there, that one right there, that one right there. It looks like we always have one plus a certain number of columns of four. But how many columns do we have? When x is equal to one, we have no columns of four blocks. When x is equal to two, we have one column. When x is equal to three, we have two columns. So when x is equal to anything, it looks like we have one less number of columns. So it's going to be x. It's going to be x minus 1, right? 
When x is 2, x minus 1 is 1. When x is 3, x minus 1. So this right here is x minus 1. x is 2, this is x minus 1. This is x minus 1. This is x minus 1. And x minus 1 will tell us the number of columns we have, right? Here we have 1, 2, 3 columns. Here we have 1, 2 columns. Here we only have 1 column. Here we have 0 columns. So it even works for the first term. And in every one of these columns, so this right here, x minus 1 is the number of the number of columns. And then in each column, we have four blocks. So it's the number of columns times times four, right? For each of these columns, we have one column. We have one, two, three, four blocks. So this is the equation that describes the growth pattern. So let me write this. Let me simplify this a little bit. If I were to multiply four times x minus one, I get the number of blocks being equal to one plus four times x, I have to distribute it. Four times x is four x. And then four times negative one is negative four. So that's equal to the number of blocks, the number of blocks. And then we could simplify this. We have a one and we have a minus four, or I guess we're subtracting four from it. So this is going to be equal to 4x minus 3 is the number of blocks given our x terms. So if, we, if we're on term 50, it's going to be 4 times 50, which is 200, minus 3, which is 197 blocks. Now, another way you could have done it is you could have just said, look, every time we're adding 4, this is a linear relationship. And you could essentially find the, the, the slope of the line that connects this, but assume that our line is only defined on integers. And that might be a little bit more complicated, but the way that you think about it is, the way that you think about it is, every one, every time we added a block, we added, or every time we added a term, we added four blocks. So we could write it this way. We could write change, so this triangle right here means change. Delta means change in blocks, change in blocks, change in blocks divided by divided by change in x. Now you might recognize this. This is slope. So and if you don't worry, you know, if you don't if slope is a completely foreign concept to you, you can just do it the way we did the first part of this video. And that's a completely legitimate way and hopefully it'll make some connections between what slope is. So what is the change in blocks for a change in x? So when we went from x going from 1 to 2, so our change in x here would be 2 minus 1. We increased by 1. What was our change in blocks? It would be at 4, or 5 minus 1. It's 5 minus 1. And what is this equal to? This is equal to 4 over 1, which is equal to 4. Let me scroll over a little bit. So our change in blocks for change in x is 4, or our slope is equal to 4. So if you want to do this kind of the setting up a line, the equation of a line way, you would say that our equation, if, if well, let me write it, number of blocks, number of blocks are going to be equal to 4 times our four times the the term that we're dealing with the you know the the term in our pattern plus some constant this right here is the equation of a line if it's completely foreign to you just do it the way we did it earlier in the video and so how do we solve for this constant well we use one of our terms here we know that when we had one in our first term we only had one block so let's put that here so in our first term so when on our first term, we're going to have a, that b right there, we only had one block. So we have 1 is equal to 4 plus b. If you subtract 4 from both sides of this equation, so you subtract 4 from both sides, what do you get? On the left-hand side, 1 minus 4 is negative 3. And that's equal to, these 4's cancel out. And that's equal to b. So another way to get the equation of line, we've just solved that b is equal to negative 3. We said, how much do the block, the number of blocks change for a certain change in x? This is a change in the number of blocks for a change in x. We saw it's always 4. 4 per change in x. When x changes by 1, we change by 4. That gave us our slope. And then to solve for, if you viewed this as a line, although this is only defined on integers, uh, non, I guess, positive integers, 
In this situation, you could view this as a y-intercept. To solve for this constant, we just use one of our terms. You could have used any of them. We used 1 and 1. You could have used 3 and 9. You could have used anything. We solved b is equal to negative 3. And so if you put b back here, you get 4x minus 3, which is what we got earlier in the video right there. Hopefully you found that fun. Well, I'm not sure if it was fun, but it was pretty informative. And now you can see how you can find the nth term of a series. Right, please, grade 10s, go practice, 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 and then go do the assessment at the end of the section. Have a lovely day.